Welcome back to Midday. We are joined by Linda, of course, no stranger to Midday, to talk a little bit about those pesky little ticks and Lyme disease that comes along with it. Uh, Linda, thank you for being here. Really You're appreciate thank your you time. I know that um, you are quite an advocate for, for getting uh, the awareness out there for surrounding Lyme disease. You yourself live with Lyme disease. Maybe just tell us a little bit about sort of your journey and um, your diagnosis at that time. Uh, well, I was diagnosed in 2013. I went from being fully functional, mm -hmm. totally healthy, mm -hmm. to less than two months later, I couldn't really stand up, walk, or talk. All because of a tick bite? Yes. Um, mine, was, mine was made worse and complicated even deeper because I was misdiagnosed and I was treated with antibiotic, or sorry, not with antibiotics, with steroids, oh, okay. which are really bad for someone with Lyme. So, yeah, within two short months, I wasn't very functional. Yeah. So this is the time of the year that we always talk about ticks and tick season and, and Lyme disease and, and any of the other um, medical conditions that can come along with getting a uh, bite from a tick. Um, is it really prevalent out there right now, Linda? Like, or what do you know about sort of tick season itself and, and the amount of people that are, are being impacted? Well this is a bad time. Yeah. Everything's waking up. They're waking up hungry. They're looking for their first blood meal. We're convenient. Yeah. Um, with the rodents, the birds, everything else, for somebody to say, oh, it's only just there. I was told once that I was four kilometers away from an active tick zone. Okay. When we figure they're transported on birds and that four kilometers is not a distance to feel safe from. Mm -hmm. um, the most important thing is tuck your pants into your socks. If you have hair like mine, make sure it's braided when you're out in the bush. If you're walking in a line of a group of people, rotate who's last in line. Oh, interesting. So, and especially if you're wearing light colored clothing, they're really small. They can be small like a sesame seed, yeah. even smaller. So if you're wearing light clothing and you're constantly rotating position, you can always check each other just quickly watch each other's backs, make sure they're not crawling up, that kind of thing. Because they'll crawl from below all the way up, right? So, you, you know, if yes. you're keeping an eye out, you might see it happening. Yes. Okay. And they usually want to go for somewhere dark and warm. They want to hide to where they know they're not going to be disturbed. Yeah. Um, I, myself, because of my hair and I was bit in the head, Yes. I do, I take my fingers and I just kind of crawl like this. Yeah. And I tell people I'm feeling for a grain of sand. Oh. When you feel that grain of sand, I just rub it. And if it's a grain of sand, it'll move and you can brush it out. If it sticks there, you make sure you have somebody check that. Okay. Um, they say if it sticks, if it sticks, don't flick it, it's a tick. Okay. Okay, so if you flick and it sticks, it's a tick. Okay. Um, they dig in and they yeah. hook in with their barbs. Yeah. So. And then what's your next step? Because there's, I feel like there's some, um, you know, some people say do this, some people say do that. I mean, what do you do? Do you just go to the doctor or do you try and get someone to get it out? The quicker it's removed, the safer. Okay. okay, because the longer it's there, they can transmit diseases through their saliva, mm -hmm. but through their stomach contents. So the longer it's there, the more you increase your chances. Um, there are many things online about removal of a tick. Yeah. From oil to put a match in it, put a pin in it, it'll back itself out. Please do not do this. Yeah. Um, there are proper tick removals and instructions online that you can go. Um, there's a Kamloops Cares About Lyme Disease. They have, it was just reposted today for safe removal of ticks. You will literally take in your tweezers that are straight, mm -hmm. put it as close to your skin as mm -hmm. you can, grab it and lift straight up. Okay. It'll take a minute, it's gonna hang on, just as if I'm pulling my skin there. Yeah, yeah. Don't squeeze it harder and pull harder or try to twist it. Just same pressure, mm -hmm. it'll let go. Wow. The idea is going as close to the skin as you can, you're pinching its lips. Okay. So you're preventing anything else from going into you and that's the most important thing. Okay. Then, yes, antiseptic right away yeah. and save that tick Take it in just to get tested. and get it yeah. tested. Yeah. Yes. Um, quickly before we let you go, Linda. I, again, I think there's some some um, you know some people say we do have uh, Lyme disease ticks in camel or ticks that carry Lyme disease in camel. Some say we don't. Do we? So I was infected in White Rock. Okay. And um, as I said, they're spread with birds. So if you figure that oh no, they said it's only in California. Well, birds. Travel. Travel. 
so they aren't being very picky. Mm -hmm. And those ticks can stay on those birds for days. Mm -hmm. So if it picked it up somewhere where we do say, yes, it's a, a danger zone, and it was on there for three days mm -hmm. during migration, how far would it go before it dropped that tick? Right. And if that was infected, ticks can lay three to 5,000 eggs each time they lay. Wow. So okay. if those eggs are laid near something that's infected and they all feed, Right? Or if you were bit by something that was partially fed, mm -hmm. your, your risks are increased. Okay, well we really appreciate your time, Linda, and i um, glad to see you're doing well. Um, and quickly tell us the website again that, that people can go to. It's on Facebook, it's Kamloops Cares About Lyme Disease. Okay. And there's also Lyme Hope, okay. which is fantastic. Wonderful. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're back in a moment. Stay with us on Midday.